All right, folks, we're talking today about the structure of a typical World War I battle. Um, these battles were trench battles, and so I've got a drawing up here that I'm going to explain to you, and then we'll talk through kind of what exactly went on in a typical World War I battle. So here we've got the British trenches. Um, again, not a ton of them, but you can kind of see the point here. This is the British trenches, the British artillery, the German trenches, and the German artillery here. And then between the British and the German trenches, both sides strung a ton of barbed wire, which is this stuff. And this was the area that was known as no man's land, because if you get stuck out here, you're not really in your trench anymore, there's not a whole lot of cover. So that's kind of the, the setting for the World War I battles. So we're going to say that this battle that we're about to see right here, this is a, a British attack. So the British will be attacking from this side, similar to what you'll be doing in the battle at dawn. So the first thing that you've got to do if you're going to, if you're going to attack during World War I, you've got to build up a ton of material, a bunch of our, uh, artillery shells, and you've got to bring a bunch of men into your trenches to get ready for that attack. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to attack, you're going to amass men and material to get ready for the attack. Start the attack generally was an artillery barrage, and what this was trying to do was two things. The British artillery pieces here are shooting and trying to they're shooting and trying to blow up the, the barbed wire here. And the reason that they're trying to blow up this barbed wire is when the British charge across no man's land, when they go over the top and charge to no man's land, charge through no man's land towards the German trench, they want to make it as easy as possible to get through this barbed wire. So the first thing we're going to try to do is blow up all this barbed wire to make it easier to get through. The second thing that they're going to try to do is they're going to try to target the German trenches and the German artillery and take them out of commission. So here you've got the initial barrage of a World War I trench attack. So again, you've got the British here trying to knock out the barbed wire in no man's land trying to blow up the Germans in their trench, and trying to knock out the German artillery. If you could do those things, your chances of getting across no man's land and to the German trenches were a little bit better. Now the problem is, though, if the Germans see the barrage coming through no man's land and feel the barrage coming on them and on their artillery pieces, what do they know is going to happen? They know an attack is coming, which isn't so good for those British soldiers. Barrage. The next thing that's going to happen is the British are going to mass on the front line. They're going to mass on the front line of their troops here and get ready to go over the top. Now, to go over the top means you're leaving the protection of the trenches, which were underground, and coming out over the top into no man's land through the barbed wire towards the German trench. This was always the goal in a World War I battle, was to get to go over the top, get through the barbed wire easily because your artillery barrage had destroyed it, get to the German trench which had been heavily damaged and there were a lot of dead people in it because of your artillery barrage, and get all the way back through and get a breakthrough into the German lines. Now the problem with that is a lot of times these barrages didn't work. People would get stuck in no man's land because sometimes those artillery barrages would just move the barbed wire around. Other times the barrage on the enemy lines wouldn't work, so you've got a whole bunch of Germans just sitting there saying, okay, I know the British are coming, we're going to kill a bunch of them. Sometimes the artillery didn't get taken out very well, so as the British are coming through no man's land, you've got German artillery shooting back at them. Because the Germans hear and see that barrage, they know that the British are coming, so they can load up their artillery pieces and get ready to shoot at the British. on is as the British go over the top towards the German trenches, in addition to the rifles that are going on here, the Germans also have machine guns, and those made it really, really difficult to attack during World War I, because these British are out, they have no cover, and the Germans here have a lot of cover. So as the British are running across no man's land, those machine guns are just picking people apart. So that was another way that the technology made it much more easy for the Germans to defend against a British attack during World War I. These over-the-top tactics were kind of wasteful, 
Um, it was a huge, huge way for men to die. So in this, in this battle, the British would have had a lot of deaths. In fact, some of these soldiers at the front line were known as cannon fodder. They were food for cannons, and they were, their job generally was just to go out and die. The generals in World War I also didn't really adapt to the artillery pieces and the machine guns that people had, and so that made the, the number of deaths in combat in these typical World War I battles very, very high. This also created that stalemate where the British attack, they don't really gain any land, and then they go back to their trenches with more dead people. Then the Germans attack, they get a bunch of dead people and don't really gain any land and go back to their trenches. So that's that stalemate. to do, though, is get men through no man's land and penetrate the enemy trenches here. And if you could do that and take over that part of the trench, then you send a bunch of men in there, take over that part of the trench, and the idea is that control of that area expands. You're able to send your troops through like this and just keep taking land further to the north and further to the south. This was known as a break breakthrough, and that was what kind of the goal was for all World War I battles. However, these were very difficult to come by because of the weaponry involved in World War I. It made it much more easy to defend than to attack. Hopefully all that made sense. If it didn't, come talk to me. We'll get it ironed out. Thanks.